This video is sponsored by Established Titles. Keeping God of War fashion, menu straight to the game. Gotta say, I love the God drip that Santa Monica gave Kratos, but nothing beats the straight bear chest of Kratos for me. I love the whole feeling of who the hell even needs armor. My lord, Kratos! Another city is ready to fall! Soon all shall know the glory of Sparta! I mean, what did the gods really expect? The whole reason the man is alive is because of his desire for conquest, and then give that man the ultimate power over war? Yeah, okay. Coupled that with refusing to let him die and force him to become the only thing he hates more than himself? Greek gods are dumb, and I'm glad Santa Monica keeps that up here. Enough, Kratos. Maybe it's just me, but seeing Athena in the flesh feels really special. Like there was a part of me that believed she was always just a statue. The wrath of Olympus grows. Soon I will no longer be able to protect you. I need no protection. Spoken like the true god of war. Do not forget that it was I who made you a god, ghost of Sparta. Oh, because he was just clamoring to be one, yeah? Kratos had turned the pain of his memories into hatred. Oh, baby, do I love the callbacks to the opening of God of War 1. And the leap being recontextualized. He's now doing the same thing Ares did that got the Olympians to turn on him. Live long enough to see yourself become the villain, I guess. Athena! You conspire against me! Yep. But you should be flattered. Instead of hiring a demigod to kill you, she went to Daddy Zeus. I love, love, love that we get to use the Golden Blades of Athena, at least for a moment, because the Golden Blue is just so pretty, and God of War 1 never really gave us that chance. Also just adds to his station, that being godly and righteous. The colors being a direct contrast to Ares. So cool that the Colossus is just in the background trying to figure out how to get to us, and it's not even our main concern. By the gods, he's killed them all. He still has some of the powers of a god. I think even without them, Yod falls fast as Athena's loyalty to Kratos. So this game was released on the PS2 when it launched, while many other titles were getting their start on the PS3 at the time. Santa Monica proved that working with the hardware they knew and pushing it to its absolute limits was the best way to go, as when God of War 2 launched, it was still looking better than a lot of PS3 titles at the time. And even now streamed. Obviously, the resolutions, geometry, and textures aren't up to date, but as an overall package, just like God of War 1, its art style impresses me and keeps the experience enjoyable. I am the God of War! It'd probably get annoying playing throughout this game, so glad Kratos saying stuff during his spells isn't a thing. But I do like this opening with how strong and cocky Kratos is, just mopping fools up. And if you've ever wanted a title like Kratos has, then Established Titles provides that opportunity. Established Titles is a project based on the historic Scottish custom where landowners were referred to as lairds, or lords and ladies in English. They allow you to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land to grant the privilege to call oneself a lord or a lady. But even better, for every order made with ET, they commit to planting one tree, working with many charities across the world such as One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to help preserve this beautiful earth. You'll receive an official certificate with a crest verifying your new title, along with your own unique plot number and exact location of your land. Since this is an official title you are granted, you can use it as your prefix instead of Mr. or Mrs. How much cooler does Lord Gaming Wins sound versus Mr. Gaming Wins? Or even you, Kyle. Wouldn't Lord Kyle make you feel so much more powerful? You can use this title on things like your credit card, plane tickets, or even your dating profile. And who doesn't want to date a Lord? And it makes for the perfect last minute gift. Also, for the first 200 people purchasing a title pack, using my link will have their land located next to each other and mine. How cool would it be for us to build our little Gaming Wins kingdom? Like I mentioned, with the holidays coming up soon, it could be the perfect option for our last minute gift. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use the code GAMINGWINS10, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash GAMINGWINS10 to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Keeping in traditional God of War fashion, we've got a giant boss battle to kick us off. God of War 2 really did take God of War 1 and just go bigger and better with every aspect that they could. This is funny and you're too serious. There will never be a game like the first two God of War ones. I mean that in the sense of no game will ever wow us the way these titles did when they were released. In a way, we've kind of seen it all. So looking back, I'm glad it was God of War that blew me away when it comes to what the PlayStation hardware could do for the first time. And with that, Santa Monica has always been the developer to push the hardware to its limit for the past three console generations. Really hoping to do something towards the end of the PS5 with Ragnarok being a duology and all that. A cute feature that we've got all of our stats and weapons maxed out since like... We're a god and all that. It's an even better way to tutorialize the game because we're a god. We should just stomp everything we come across. The War of the Colossus sounds like metal scraping together. I love when sound designers get creative like this. 
X marks the spot, baby. What makes this Colossus so formidable is how fast this boy can move. You'd expect something of this size to be lumbering. Big fan of all the new QT button presses. R1, L1, flicking the stick, rotating the stick. Seeing God of War 2 and thinking about future games really makes me realize how little QT's God of War 1 had outside of general combat and doors. This is the second time Kratos has been launched and fallen through the ceiling. He even looks at it this time. I wonder if this is a pattern or something. Oh boy, you better get ready for some puzzles in this game, because, correct me if I'm wrong, God of War 2 has the most puzzles of any of them. Depending on who you are, that's a slam dunk winner winner. If you're a smooth brained like me with puzzles, this was rough. But hey, Kratos moves moderately faster with dragging things. Yay! Drain your godly powers into the sword, Kratos. Why do you aid me now? When I was younger, I always interpreted this as Kratos being annoyed at Zeus, which to me is hilarious. But in reality, he's actually more suspicious of Zeus than annoyed. Probably still annoyed, though. What I do now, I do for the good of all Olympus. So, Kratos really isn't the brightest candle of the bunch in the first three. Should have seen this coming from a mile away. But to be fair, there's a chance that Kratos actually believes Zeus and that it's Athena going against him. I like that our enemies aren't complete idiots. Bronzy Boy gave Kratos a hand and not being a god and now is using his stump to his advantage. Thank you, Santa Monica, for letting us jump fast along ropes and walls. God of War has never been one to be lacking in level design. Being inside the Colossus is just straight up cool. The only way it could be better is if the Colossus was trying to get at us in some way. This is a load screen, right? Like a well-crafted load screen, right? Something we will see a few times is that bosses aren't just hit until they die. There are more puzzle elements implemented in the fight, which keeps them way more engaging and fresh from one another. Kratos jumps from the mouth of the Colossus, arrogantly boasting to the gods about his abilities, which is real funny. Because this is our third to the pattern. The third time he jumps down. Believing himself victorious, only to be destroyed from a threat he didn't see coming just like Deuce. And each time Kratos falls, he's falling further and further down until the last one where he falls from the mouth of the Colossus, such as the Olympians are spitting Kratos out from his station. I love the design for the Blade of Olympus. That is all. The camera doesn't make Zeus the focal point of this shot, so you might not even consider it to be a player in the scene to come, which is perfect because neither does Kratos. The camera even struggles to follow Zeus as if he's so powerful he's got control over Santa Monica. Man, does Zeus look like a garden gnome next to the way too big sword that should be smaller than him. And Zeus is played by none other than Corey Burton, who also played Count Dooku in the Clone Wars. I will not let Eddie's fate be my own. The gods are petty and pathetic, and your rule is weak. Damn, even when he can barely stand, Kratos does not put up with no sh You must vow to forever serve me. Remember how that went last time, Zeus? <laughs> Thanks, Santa Monica, for letting us at least try to fight back. It also makes us feel the loss more because Zeus tricked and beat Kratos, but he also beat us, making us resent him just like Kratos. QTs you can't win are the best. Just saying. Our first pre-rendered cutscene, and it is beautiful! A choice from the gods is as useless as the gods themselves. You will never be the ruler of Olympus. The cycle ends here. I'm going to throw on a win for God of War 2018 for when Kratos says this, because I completely missed it having not played 2 in so many years. Notice how the blade's core is red, like it's still sucking off Kratos. I mean, sucking up Kratos' life god force energy. Fight, Spartan. Don't like that. I like that. Never mind. Ah! This is not the end. You can do anything with children, and it's just creepy. Who are you? Rorikstead. I'm... I'm from Rorikstead. I am the Titan Gaia, ever-present mother of Earth. Linda Hunt deserved to have an actual character in the game. She's so good in the role and is actually as cute as a button. I am the Titan Gaia, ever-present mother of Earth. I have watched you become a powerful warrior, and I have been with you through all the events of your life, but I can no longer simply watch. Explaining why she's been our narrator throughout. <laughs> Kratos is a hardcore mother Escaping Hades is just another Tuesday for Kratos. Glad it's not a huge section of this game, as we got more important things to do, like 300 times slow puzzles. I like Kratos told the last Spartan, as telling him he's straight up working with the Titans would be no bueno. I say there's a certain art and beauty to the murder that Kratos commits. Normally sections like this are super intrusive and annoying, but flying on Pegasus really doesn't feel like that much of a hindrance. So hats off to Santa Monica for good controls. 
so close to quoting the Ghost King from Lord of the Rings. I'll give you a win because anything that makes me think of that trilogy is a win. I would question why Kratos is not cold, but he's got the flame imperishable. I mean, blades of Athena. Hey, look, the mirror. Zeus, my only crime was helping mankind. When I took the fires of Olympus to the mortals. And look where that got us. Maybe Zeus was right. Every day by this cursed bird. <laughs> That bird was just like, what's up? Man, are they as detailed as they can be with his insides reviving? Typhoon is often described having sparkly, shiny eyes. Neat, that sparkle lines up with our UI sparkle. And embodied it with the power of the Titans. These ashes will give you great strength, Kratos. Because the dude needs more ashes on his body, right? The animation work here for Kratos is once again beautiful, and the reason why I use this mode as often as I could. <laughs> It's not often we get a straight up heroic track for Kratos. It almost feels out of place, but I like it. Seriously though, why are God of War 2's animations better than some modern games? It really good to show it's about artistry, hard work, and passion to make a good product. Zeus took on a form of a bird that saved him when going to kill Kratos, the eagle that ended the cycle of Kronos eating all his children. Does Harry Kronos make anyone else uncomfortable? But my foolish act of compassion would haunt the Titans forever. The same can be said about Zeus digging the grave for Kratos in God of War 1. He betrayed all of the Titans for the sins of just one. The sins of his father, Kronos. And that's why the story of God of War is so good, all the way up to 2018. And it's not until God of War 18 that Kratos truly realizes what he's done and become. Like, Kratos. Guy is literally telling you the cautionary tale that you are following. These giant fistas are still impressive to me. I serve and protect the sisters of fate for the glory of Zeus. The time of Zeus is coming to an end. See, Chris could be reasonable, only killing when he absolutely has to. And he, uh, absolutely needs to kill Zeus. All the other gods and Dibby gods just got in the way. It's actually their fault, right? <laughs> This game doesn't deserve a brutal counter because God of War 3 still is nuts, but this deserved it for sure. Neat using the chains as a crop to get the horses going. What a freaking shot, seriously. I was expecting a fade in and fade out, but no, Santa Monica makes us run it all, and I actually like it so we can really soak in the scale of everything. The animate of the fates is what most puzzles in this game ride on, and it is a pretty fun, neat mechanic, adding uh, additional layer puzzles that would have worked on their own without the time slowing. You might notice the sexy chests that harbor our stat upgrades in God of War 3. Here, those bastards are so well hidden, but worth it because it's an instant upgrade. Oh sh**, Barbarian Boy is back? I have my way through the Guardians of Hades, and have my way out of the fires of torment to change my fate. You know, after hearing him do this, I fully believe that he could have taken down Kratos in single combat. And to think he did all this without the blessing from the gods? Why isn't this dude the main character? Ah. Lord of the Rings has ruined the sound that horses make since they use that sound for trolls. And I've heard the noise come out of the trolls a thousand times more than I have horses. So to me, horses sound like trolls. Oh my God, yes, this dude is in all three main games and I would have loved if they kept the me going in the newest ones. And from here on out, you might notice I'm playing on New Game Plus. This is sadly because everything from this point on in my footage got corrupted and I had to re-record the entire game. So I did recently do a normal playthrough and I'll be talking from that experience, even if the gameplay doesn't always reflect that. I'll add on though, using the Blade Olympus for an entire game is just a blast to tear up everything. I also like that Kratos gets to fight this guy again, defeating him on his own terms with his own abilities, for the most part. If we're gonna be honest, all of the weapons and magic are really just reskins with slight tweaks, barring the Spear of Destiny, which is fine by me as I wouldn't have thought twice about it unless I wasn't playing games for my living. So they get a pass from me. The Barb Hammer really is just a blunt blade of Artemis, but way more novel since it's our OG mortal enemy's weapon. What blows my mind is how all these soldiers got this far without the ammo of the Fates, and how all the puzzles are reset for us when we get there. These men are just built different. These motherfuckers can get so annoying, but I like the different challenge of having to focus them down before they summon more and more Cyclops. Can you even blame me? Even Santa Monica's troll-like enemies have some horse in there. These boys being on top isn't just for show either. They will mess you up, making the Cyclops attacks faster and more punishing. Most of God of War 2's puzzles are just logic puzzles, which is why I mentioned not enjoying them too much earlier because the variety of thinking isn't too taxing. But this is what got me since it was such a simple concept with the mechanic we've yet to see in God of War. Leave it to a Spartan to be a regular ass dude 1v3. Yo, smart reuse of one of the like two bosses in God of War 1. The assets at least. Like I said in God of War 1, bring back more to straight up traps. 
Uh, some things never change. Just like you got a War 2018, we've got to go all the way out of our way for the simplest item or thing to progress. God of War. Jason. Like Jason and the Argonauts? Well, the Golden Fleece being munched on and the Skellymen we find in the moment. So yeah, I still love how every step just has Greek heroes and myths and treats them like they're not a big deal. We get Jason, Perseus, Theseus, and Kratos just kind of murders them all or does some looting. Say what you will about Kratos, but he's never been lacking in creativity. I dig the fleece as more of a piece of armor than just some golden fabric. And oh baby, is that the look that makes our OG Kratos so badass. Took long enough for them to give us a straight up counter. Love it though. This is revenge for all those bullshit rock stuns that insta killed me at full health. Never reach the sisters! Go to the Sparta! It's my fate! Well, running like that, I don't think you're gonna get very far. <laughs> The build up to URL is neat. It's like she's watching us and we can't see her. Building up anticipation when we finally throw down with her. Do I love the artificial time slow and speed up of some of these time traps? No. But as long as you're not just speeding through it like in this clip since I knew what to do, it does make for really honest tension on the first playthrough. <laughs> Okay, Fat Medusa is now what I expected, but I'm here for some grotesqueness. And damn, Homegirl doesn't even need to hold us in her gaze to freeze us. Sets her apart from the regular Gorgons. When designing URL, Santa Monica had the idea of her weight being too much on her, that she needed to drag herself, and monitor her crawl after an alligator. Even in death, she's angry as hell. Have I mentioned that the grappling is super fun and never got old? Because the grappling is super fun and never got old. Ah, Santa Monica heard about the comments from my last video and only gave me one dirt hole of a camera angle. Just like the Cyclops summoners, the high priests give us another angle of fun in the combat. I bet they had to spend a lot of time, uh, timing this out just to succeed on it by the skin of your teeth. Are you watching me now, sisters? Give me a sign! The juxtaposition between Kratos and, well, everyone is still the line. All looking to the gods and higher powers as if they actually care about the people down on Earth. And since we know what Kratos knows, they all just look so stupid and it dears us to Kratos more. Am I the great Perseus to kill this fallen god? Harry Hamlin was brought in to play Perseus. You might recognize his voice because he actually played Perseus way back in the day with the OG Clash of the Titans. Super cool that Santa Monica paid him mind and brought him into the booth. Which brings me to the cutscenes. This game was made before mocap was a widely used tool in game creation. So one, getting out raw performance out of the actors is much harder and the directors gotta work harder to describe exactly what they want from the actors. And they still nail it. And two, it really is up to the animator to truly be the actors here. They've got to animate the body and face to match exactly all the nuances that make each character unique. If not, at least I can bathe in the glory of being the one who brought down the mighty Kratos. And Harry Hallam actually approached this from the POV that this is the character he played 30 years prior, just all grown up. I'll give it to God of War. They really upped their game when it comes to boss fights, from mechanics to spectacle. Using the splashes of Percy's feet was a pretty fun challenge to take him down. God, I'm embarrassed how long it took me to figure this one out. Sneaky, sneaky, Santa Monica. Yo, was not expecting that dude that we killed like four hours ago to come back and give us our final weapon. A weapon that is actually totally unique in a way it handles compared to all other new weapons in this game. This is just cool. You can't tell me you wouldn't totally do a longer grapple challenge. Hmm, I wonder what happened to his body. Oh. My God, they just had to bring back these fuckers, didn't they? Do you hear me? It's my wings that will make it across. It is my test! The new take on Icarus is so befitting of God of War. For one, of the classic cautionary tale of hubris, which, I mean, all characters in Greek myth have buckets of, and also his hyperfixation to get to the Sisters of Fate and controlling his fate. Which I think is why we all love Kratos so much. Not because he's a badass rage monster that made murder his art form, but because he's the only one in this entire world that's complete control and agency over his destiny. The gods can't stop him. The fates can't stop him. The king of both the titans and gods can't stop him. And not even death has ever held him. God, the goofball of a camera work is just... Mwah. Another QTE you can't succeed on. Oh boy, Atlas. Those who play Chains of Olympus know these boys go back. Love me some Wings of Icarus. Just adding more layers to the platforming is always a win in my book. You really shouldn't put your Kratos in that. And how disgustingly awesome though. Why was Kratos' first thought to get back to the surface was to go inside Atlas? Uh, he's gonna need that back. Talk about a torment. Being forced to hold up the world on top of having things living inside you and lava flowing in your cracks and crevices? Ugh. God of War 2018 is a masterpiece, but one thing I've heard about that I kind of agree with is that the environments do leave a little bit to be desired. 
which the OG trilogy never had a problem with. This entire level going in and outside of Atlas's body is just so inspired. Don't fuck with the Titans. They can catch mosquitoes with their fingertips. <laughs> the sound I make when EA announces they are publishing another game. And how do you plan to defeat the king of the gods? By taking the blade of Olympus back! Kratos always yells his lines, but at least here it's justified. He's got a little baby voice compared to Atlas. Nope, still don't like Harry Vin Diesel. Atlas showing off the magic he's about to give us. Man, that music of God of War is so damn good! And the framing of the Olympians being the power-hungry bad guys is awesome. Because, like I mentioned, most humans believe them righteous. Which we all know very well they are not. How can Atlas look both like a big baby and also a grown man? Even in this cutscene, you can see the little magic that happens when Kratos brings the Titans to his timeline. So, really, the sisters have no power as this was going to happen no matter what. Hence why Kronos and Atlas were not brought back to fight in God of War 3, since they've been personally dealt with by the gods. I have given you the last of my magic spark. God, Michael Clark Duncan has such a booming sexy voice for Atlas. You'll notice it's a matte painting inside that temple, and when the stone wipes it, it becomes rendered in. Just little techniques to keep the frame rate up since we didn't need to see some 3D model as we were fighting. Thank you, Shadow Marker, for giving us another enemy dump, same as the last game. Poor Hermes not getting up there. But honestly, after playing 3, I kind of understand why. So in other words, Zeus is a beta ass bitch. This temple is just whack ass puzzle after puzzle with weird underground blood pools. I guess maybe this is where the sacrifice's blood would go? This is God of War 2's most neat puzzle as we can go get extra gear by figuring out which beam to light. Or just unfreeze the eagle and play on easy mode, but the idea is there. Man, is this one just hilarious if it takes you a while to figure out? <laughs> just listening to him jump off time and time again is great. And what a little man. Not doing his duty just because it's Kratos. Like, dude, come on, just like Kratos says later. This is your purpose. Die with honor. Straight up though, why weren't there more puzzles like this? Or having to do one thing in a timeline to affect the other like Sinwin's sacrifice? Me in the middle of the night drinking my water bottle? Ooh, this one can get dicey. And I love when you hear the sound of them coming out while slow and making me brown the bed. This might be one of the hardest sections of the game for me, Loki. What was the hardest for you? Man, that Taco Bell be hitting hard. Oh, this is the highlight of the game. The area is silhouetting us, and then the 2D combat really makes this feel like a duel. And with them both being Spartans, of course it'd be like a dance. Talk about sweeping the rug out from under you. I told you to return to Sparta. Why do you leave Sparta unprotected? On one hand, this is Kratos being a hard head with a hard on for Sparta, but on the other, it's about him being upset that he accidentally killed a fellow Spartan and is looking for something else to blame than himself. Zeus. He came under the cloak of darkness. Man stays alive for like two minutes after being stabbed by the mother blades of Athena just to deliver some news about the destruction of Sparta. And if you pay attention, this man is the farthest we've seen any other person get. Not counting the bodies next to Clotho, something tells me she eats them, so go f***ing Sparta. To change the fate of our beloved Sparta, for I am all that is left. <coughs> the music is so good and sad right here, but even better because the track is called The Glory of Sparta, and it's been changed from the triumphant version we hear in Rhodes to this heartbreaking one as they lament Sparta. I grow tired of the lies of the gods! Do I love it when the players take away control for the player for the character to just be the character. All of our button presses just have Kratos slamming and stomping his feet like a lining little baby. It's not like he lost his entire kingdom or anything, jeez. There is a war on the horizon and we need you to lead us into battle. Guy using him as a pawn was set up even in this game, using the image of his wife to coerce him. And then placing him in the Elysium Fields, which is meant to be a paradise contrasted with the burning of Sparta. Even if he was in paradise, his past would forever haunt him. Bringing some light puzzle elements into our boss fight. Right on. God, just looking at her makes me think of mono white angels and I want to die. What's the point of covering one titty? You know? I mean, I'm not complaining, and also Kratos keeps his entire shirt off all game, so... For the first time, we got an almost completely aerial boss fight, cleverly utilizing the new grapple mechanic well. Woo! Going back to the first game. The sword which you stand on delivered your victory against Ares. Without it, you will be the one who dies this day. That's a very roundabout way of, uh... Just killing Kratos. But I'll say the Fates are smart enough to know that they aren't powerful enough through strength of arms to defeat him, and this is their only way. So all this combat really does live up to the achievement you get at the end. 15 minute fight scene. One last hurrah before the final two bosses of the game, really. So Clotho is the last sister of Fate, ironically the youngest based on her looks, and it's definitely not something I expected. She's the one that spins the threads of life, and was inspired by the design of Silkworms, funnily enough. She's got a cute little crown though. 
That helps. Yeah, superhero landing. Now this is what I call a final boss. Right here is where Kratos evens the playing field for the rest of the time that Zeus is alive. Either it's because I was younger or that God of War was brutal with its final bosses because I remember just how tough Zeus was when played on normal and above. These games really made you feel accomplished when you beat them. I have come to kill you, Zeus! Ooh, paid back callback. I'm wondering why Zeus would even fall for this. But then again, it's stupid ass petty god Zeus. Ooh, does it feel good just to kick Zeus like a tin can? But here's the real callback. And not knowing there was a third one, I really thought we actually did it. It's emotional as hell right now, but god damn it, Santa Monica, you had to come in with the joke trophy name. Stop! No! And another person Kratos seems to have affection for, dead by his hand. TC Carson gives such a good performance here that I could definitely see him doing the 2018 Kratos. Pretty cool that the goddess of wisdom slash war isn't hypersexualized. Santa Monica knew when to have fun and when to pull back. His own son. His son. Huh. So I guess Zeus was just being honest with all those my sons. Just thought he referred to everyone as that. Zeus must live so that Olympus will prevail. I really never noticed that Zeus took these words out of Athena's mouth with his speech for the World War II. I mean the Kratos Siege. The time of the gods has come to an end! I really didn't expect them to live up to the statement and the hype with the third entry, but did they deliver. Victory awaits! See? The effects of the Titans are the same ones we see when Atlas was remembering the fight. Hence why we don't see any of the Titans in the timeline until Kratos brings them back. It's kind of mind-bending. Kratos brings them from his timeline, plucked from the Great Wars timeline, right as the big blast happens so the gods just think that they got evaporated. So after the gods win the war, they just live their lives until the moment that Kratos went back in time to bring them to the siege. It might be the most straightforward, simple time travel that doesn't break anything that I've ever seen. And it makes sense in my head, I don't know if I explain it properly, but it works and I don't think there's any plot holes. We will unite, we will stand together, and I will wipe out this plague. If you want to know my thoughts on the new god designs and Zeus's speech, make sure you check out my God of War 3 video. Zeus, your son has returned! I bring the destruction of Olympus! The best part of the trilogy is that they pick up pretty much exactly where the previous one did. This might be the most hyped I've ever been for a game to come out in my entire life. The next one I can think of is Ragnarok, because it's got a similar energy to God of War 3 did. Man, so God of War 2, another instant classic from Santa Monica, who never really misses. All their games are great, and if you watch any of the making of documentaries, you can really see the passion and love and sacrifices they have made for this franchise. God of War 2 does everything a good sequel should do. Take everything that was good about the first game and make it bigger and better. And boy, did they. The battles are bigger, the bosses are better, the locations are huge. Then to bring in the simple story that drives the gameplay so well of Kratos needing his vengeance. It might be my least favorite God of War of the trilogy, but that's like picking between your favorite kids. You still love them, I guess, but you know you got a favorite. Three. Three is the best. Anyway, though, what were your thoughts on God of War 2? How old were you when you first played it? I think I was about 12-ish? I'm not too sure. Anyway, let me know. And remember, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. Pizza!